Hi, my name is Yao Shang Yan and I'm a big advocate for Interfaith Dialogue in Malaysia. Here are four common models for effective dialogues which you can try to apply in your own personal or professional life. Number one, collective inquiry. A collective inquiry dialogue is normally organized by a decision maker, such as a ministry or government agency, to understand the perspective of multiple communities on a particular issue. The goal is to try and reach a consensus or suitable level of compromise. The moderator starts by explaining the rationale for calling the dialogue and asks questions relevant to the issue at hand. Participants seek to clarify the situation and explore questions together as a group. The moderator acknowledges their input and manages the flow of the discussion. For example, urban and rural planning authorities could have a corrective inquiry on planning the constructions of places of worship. This can help organizers better understand both practical and religious considerations of each community. Number two, critical dialogic education. This dialogue model focuses on encouraging religious communities to explore new possibilities in service of a common social goal. This dialogue should not be limited by power dynamics like having a moderator from a government authority. They are often organized and moderated by civil society or research institute in a round table format. The moderator explains the teams and participants answer pre-prepared questions while also accepting questions from other participants. This model is suitable for topics that may affect society as a whole, for example, the amendments to the Sharia Court Criminal Jurisdiction Act, commonly known as IUU 355. A CDE allows participants to explore in depth questions such as whether IUU 355 affects the secular status of Malaysia and the scope of practice of Sharia courts. It can help participants examine the issues from different perspectives to find out how it affects the nation. Number three, conflict resolution and peace building. This form of dialogue uses an expert moderator with experience in mediation, religion or law to help conflicting parties identify causes of conflict as well as solutions, especially in the aftermath of a religious issue. An action plan is usually agreed upon to ensure the conflict is resolved. This type of dialogue can help de-escalate conflict, bolster public confidence and stabilize volatile situations such as the Karima Allah issue and rioting and places of worship. These issues involve sacred religious doctrines and sentiments and therefore require delicate interventions. However, in Malaysia, this type of dialogue is rare and usually involve participation from relevant authorities in closed door settings. Number four, community building and social action. This form of dialogue is normally held at grassroots level in conjunction with other community events to improve inter-religious relationship and cooperation. While enjoying the occasion, participants listen to panelists such as religious, social and community leaders sharing their thoughts on issues affecting the community and not only on religion. Participants are normally given an opportunity to express their thoughts on the issues and what they can do to solve them. An example would be the Karaga Malaysia Interfaith Dialogue organized by the government, which was held at Lukun Dadanga neighborhood. So, those are the four models of interfaith dialogue that can help you develop a better understanding of other beliefs and religions in theory. They are not the complete answer to improving interfaith relations. To become truly compassionate towards others, you need an immersive experience and that means working and living with people of different faiths.